So the class is being recorded. Okay. So let me see where you are. Yes, I have to. So how can it be you and the recordings too? I guess it should be sharing only. And then share my screen. And this is how I can get you. Okay. Yes. Here we go. Bismillah. Okay. So <laughs> every time we have theme four, we have a wrap up, uh, which uh, I don't intend to do today because this is getting very boring. I, I know. Um, again, this is theme five. And this is Dr. Samih Abdul Jalil, and we're doing the writing section today. We're finishing off the reading part, which um, you know proved to be very interesting, and then we're moving on to the writing part, inshallah. Um, <clears throat> Bismillah. We have done all of that. Uh, I'm not. I don't intend to go over it. Uh, perhaps I need to talk a bit about uh, <clears throat> how to do research because we have has taken so long with us and it, it it was worth the effort and it was also worth the time that we invested on it right uh, so by now you know uh, what research means uh, and also the basics and the mechanics of research writing still remember that spoke about that enough spoke about how to validate your sources how to distinguish between hope and hype like I always say um, uh, how to uh, validate the information that you're getting from different sources and see whether they are, uh, you know, accurate and reliable, reliable or not, right? We spoke about that. Um, we spoke about supporting whatever you're saying with evidence, right? Um, earlier on, we also spoke about the uh, the different different platforms that people may use in, in order to get information and everything is now uh, is on the internet so uh, if if I have a newspaper article on the internet I have uh, an, a journal article on the internet of course I would opt for and I would choose the journal um, article because it's more uh, authoritative more uh, reliable the information presented are valid and accurate, uh, given and presented by experts in the field, right? Um, newspaper articles are for the most part sensational. Um, the journalists, with all due respect, are not experts. Uh, so you would take whatever they say with a grain of salt, like they say, to take so something with a grain of salt, it means you need, you need to, to be suspicious uh, um, and you wouldn't give the writer of the piece the benefit of the doubt uh, for the simple reason that uh, again newspaper journalists are uh, generalists like us, they are lay individuals, lay people, I spoke about being a lay person or a lay individual, it means that you are not uh, an expert in the few you may be uh, an expert in another field uh, but um, the field that we're talking about you are not so in this case um, I wouldn't take whatever you say for granted I need to challenge your ideas right okay S spoke enough about that and then we went all the way to this very interesting article on whether uh, couples um, nowadays can afford to uh, get married and the article starts with um, a foregone conclusion it says uh, can couples afford to get married anymore it, it seems that the writer is uh, or has come up with his or her own conclusion. If you're saying anymore, it means that um, 
you're uh, kind of gearing your readers into a certain corner. Uh, and this is what we uh, spoke about when we said that writers may be biased. Biased in uh, favor of something or against something. We spoke about bias and we, we're going to also sp speak about it more today. And bias means that you are in favor of something or uh, against something. Bias does not necessarily mean that you're against something. Uh, not being neutral is bias, okay? If you're neutral, it means that you're not taking sides. You're not for or against something. You're presenting all the sides, and then it's up to the reader to come up with his or her own conclusion, right? Uh, it doesn't seem that we're having this in, in the article that we read yesterday. Can couples afford to get married anymore? It doesn't seem that the writer is neutral. He is biased. So biased in, in what direction? Biased in the direction of, um, you know, wedding expenses. He says that wedding, he says and also implies there is obviously a difference between stating something and implying something. So stating something is being direct about what you're saying, okay? Um, and implying it means that you are giving us signals, you're giving us clues in the, in the article and we put them together and come up with your own opinion, okay? So uh, opinions uh, in an article are either stated and uh, explicitly stated or they are implied implied means that they are not directly stated you need to look for them you need to put uh, the pieces together and come up with the opinion of the writer um, okay we spoke about that um, <clears throat> this is where we're uh, starting today and what we have here um, so this part is about writer's uh, point of view or bias. Okay, this is what we're doing today. On uh, the level of content, we're talking about the writer's point of view or the writer's bias. On, on the level of grammar, we're doing conditional sentences. Okay. <clears throat> so... Uh, if you're, uh, this is uh, page 150, reviewing sentence structure. So what can come after an in, an each sentence below from the text in uh, 5.6? Think, then find an ending in the box below. Okay, can we do that? So we're going to take words from the box, obviously, and put them where they belong in the items A through I. Can we do that? Well, I think we can. I'll give you perhaps two minutes. Can you do that? This is 150. Exercise A. Go ahead. And I am waiting. <clears throat> uh, let me know when you have finished. Huh?
Uh, A is done, right, for us. We're starting with B, right? Okay. Can we do it together? Just wait, please, please. Okay. So be the expense assembly too high for many brides, grooms, and and their families. Yes. Okay. Uh, it was a traditional wedding, and it was a traditional wedding, and it was a traditional wedding, and any answers? It was a traditional wedding, and hello. And it made us very happy, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, that's probably this is the right answer. Yes, it was it, it was beautiful and it was beautiful and Yeah, it lasted for three days. Perhaps it lasted for, uh, for three days. It can go with C. It was a traditional wedding, and it lasted for three days. Uh, it wa And then D, it was beautiful, and uh, it made us very happy. Uh, let's move all the way to E. It would, uh, I would, I would spend the money on my child and... I would spend the money on my child and my house, yeah. Uh, so if men, remember, if men marry out of the religion and, if men marry out of the religion and, culture, yes, yes, culture. Uh, three dots, which means that there were words. Um, a ceremony with hundreds of brides and... A ceremony with hundreds of brides and... Brides and grooms, yes. Hundreds of brides and grooms, yes. Um, these dresses have hundreds of hand sewn beads and... Hand soon beads and and crystals, yeah, absolutely. I a wedding dress is only worn once, and a wedding dress is only worn once, and put and then it it is put away, and then it is put away. Okay, interesting. Okay, let's move to B. So the writer of the article probably has each uh, has each opinion below. Find the the section of the article which shows this bias. The writer of the article probably has um, each opinion below. Find the section of the article which shows this bias. Well, obviously, he, uh, either uh, opinion or bias. So the first one is done for us. Weddings are too expensive in many countries. If he says that it is too expensive, it means that he is biased somehow. So where is this part that says so? Which paragraph says so? Okay. So in A, weddings are too expensive in my in many countries the writer says the expense is simply too high okay so you're going to go back to the article and check or uh, refer back to the to the part that shows us uh, his bias when men should only marry nationals men so which part is that men 
should only marry nationals. This is four. What did he say? What did he exactly say, Ya Ahmed? If this is paragraph four, so Ahmed is saying it's paragraph four. Can you give me a hint, perhaps a statement, perhaps a sentence? Men should only marry nationals. Yes, I'm waiting. Yeah, we're not talking about... Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, this is... You are quoting, right? Okay. Okay. So government should not make marriage with foreigners illegal. Govern government should not make marriage with foreigners illegal. This is what? This is paragraph what? I'm asking about the paragraph. This is paragraph 5. Okay. So government should help couples to get married. Where are we? Paragraph what? Government should help couples to get married. Okay. Three. Are you sure? Okay. So, so it's two, not three, right? Uh, do you guys agree with uh, Salah? <clears throat> okay. Okay. E. So people should not spend 10,000 uh, pounds sterling on a wedding. So people should not spend 10, 10 pounds sterling on a wedding. But this is paragraph what? This is paragraph 2.2. Two. The pride gown, gown means dress, of course, seven. Huh? Separ the, the bridal gown, bridal is from bride, and gown means dress, by the way. So gown and dress are synonyms. The bridal gown should be hired. This is seven, right? So the bridal gown, this is six. Okay, this is six. So the bridal gown should be hired. Okay, is that clear, everyone? Okay, these are statements taken, not statements, these are like uh, summing up of the ideas presented in the different paragraphs. Okay, if we move to C, it's still about bias and spotting biases and how you can recognize bias in an essay. On a, or an article. Like I said, bias, if we say that a writer is biased, it means that he is taking sides in favor or against something. Um, okay, so how can I identify and recognize bias in an article? Um, through the adjectives that the writer uses, okay? Um, Okay, if he or she uses extreme adjectives, you can almost tell that he is biased in favor or against something. And we have examples. When uh, I write saying that the party that I, attend, uh, that I attended the other day was a boring party. So, so uh, saying boring, this is judgmental, and this is, uh, and it contains some kind of bias, right? When I say that a task is uh, perhaps long or uh, hard, or uh, these are all, uh, all they, they all carry uh, bias to them. So let's talk uh, first. Let's let's uh, before we talk about it. Before we do the exercise, let's go to skill check one. And uh, skill check one is about recognizing the writer's 
point of view and uh, the writer's biases if any so why is this important uh, I'm a recognize why uh, uh, this is obviously a reference to recognizing the point of view of a writer why do you think recognizing and identifying the writer's point of view uh, uh, is important and this is what we're reading why is this important because many writers are biased biased means that they have they are not neutral in presenting their ideas they are taking sides like we say they have an opinion which may not be based on facts so uh, uh, I think it's about time that we differentiated between facts and opinions right any yeah this is actually one of your jobs as a good and smart reader uh, you uh, should be able to uh, recognize uh, points of view uh, when you see um, some you should be able to spot bias when you see one okay so um, you should be able to also distinguish between facts um, and opinions okay sometimes writers um, you know pass off their opinions as facts they present them in such a way so that they would look like facts but they are not so you need to be on the lookout about that you need to be alert okay you should like I said the other day you should challenge the ideas presented you shouldn't take stuff for granted you should be uh, keeping your guard up if, if you like so again a reader must recognize a writer's point of view or bias in an article <clears throat> sometimes uh, it is easy because the writer states the opinion or uses must or should sometimes it's very straightforward you can almost tell that this is an opinion from the words that he is using uh, especially if he's using the government should the government must you should you must it's it's very clear that he is giving you uh, um, a path to follow or a direction that he wants you to follow but this is opinion and this is direct sometimes and we have examples when when he says for example all yani he or uh, perhaps other uh, writers all governments must deal with the rising cost of marriage so all governments must for uh, this is a direction that he is giving and and this uh, it, it shows very strongly uh, which side he is on uh, and sometimes it is not easy or it is not so easy because the writer implies the opinion we spoke about the idea of implying implying something it means that you don't say it uh, directly you're not very straightforward about it you just give signals and uh, clues and it's up to the reader to pick up those uh, clues and put them together and come up with the idea okay and we have an example when he says for example we're talking of course about implying uh, the opinion when he says there is often a huge reception when he used the word huge and he's not using the word big for example there is obviously a difference between big and huge which is bigger by the way huge or huge or big yeah huge if you're using huge it mean it means that you're you're trying to say that this is an extreme adjective if you if we're talking about the difference between big and huge we would say that huge is an extreme adjective right and extreme adjectives show people's opinion right um, okay so um, it has a bit of um, of exaggeration to it if you still remember exaggeration and how writers manipulate texts in order to uh, get their ideas across so perhaps the writer thinks receptions are often too large because the adjective is very strong the adjective huge is very strong 
okay you wouldn't use a strong adjective unless you strongly believe about something right uh, which which carries in itself uh, some kind of bias so recognizing the writer's bias helps to evaluate the information given okay so you build on the bias that you spotted if you feel that there is bias you're going to keep your guard up about the the information and the numbers and the figures that the writer is giving us right so for example the writer of the article in lesson 5.6 thinks uh, weddings are too expensive so it's too so only quotes people who are un uh, and he only quotes people who are unhappy about the cost of weddings so you can almost tell uh, uh, where he is headed with his article uh, let's go to C and again it's recognizing bias in adjectives um, so find three adjectives from the box which can go with each now so you have three adjectives in the box and we would like to see uh, um, where they can be uh, they can fit so uh, we have examples when we said boarding party when we said a lively place and when we say a long task what other combinations can you make yourself you have the the words in the box and you have the words above the box so boring party yeah boring party lively place long task what else can you come up with this is by the way C and this is 150 <clears throat> large place do we say a large place never heard of it impossible task yes hard task no we don't have hardly hardly means something totally different hard you mean hard task yeah um, Salah I think so impossible task hard task what else busy busy person yeah um, but busy but yeah yeah okay lengthy task mm, is it there yes mm -hmm. okay what else loud we don't have loud it's loud you mean loud party I'm not sure that I have the word here loud you mean loud I think is a lot quiet place quiet place and loud party So obviously you're using all the adjectives, which is not very correct. We're, we're um, you know, focusing on extreme adjectives, adjectives that are likely to communicate bias on the part of the writer. Are you getting the idea? So you don't have to use all the adjectives because some of them are not extreme. Yeah, I can say a huge book. I, I can say tiny. When, it, when you say there is obviously the difference between small and tiny. So tiny has is, is extreme, right? When you describe something as tiny. When you say tiny place, for example. Right? When you say ta tiny task, if you're a supervisor and you're assigning workloads to your uh, to uh, people who work under your supervision and when you assign stuff you say this is tiny this is a tiny task but this is obviously a bias and an exaggeration okay are you getting the idea when I say child childish person when I describe somebody as childish right are you getting the idea okay good let's move somewhere else this has been very interesting okay 
So what are we doing here? Uh, I would like us to uh, go to 151 and I would like us to first of all go to the vocabulary box where you have words like bead, bias, ceremony, crowded, gown, hire, imply, lengthy, lively, national, deception and state. So I would like you to look at these words and see if you need help with any of them. So again it's bead, bias, ceremony, crowded, gown, hire, imply, lengthy, lively, national, uh, reception and state. I'm not sure what the numbers indicate. Give me the word. Can you give me the word? So word bead. You know, whenever you have this uh, rosary, when when you finish praying and then you start uh, counting the beads and mentioning the name of God in certain way, this is called. Uh, so this rosary is made of beads. It's like uh, um, can I call it a, like a necklace more or less where it has beads to them yeah and then you have um, number two we sp we've been uh, two is bias and we've been talking about bias yeah but if you're asking about two which is bias it means that you haven't uh, understood what we've been talking about for the past 15 minutes or so bias bias means that you uh, uh, perhaps as a writer or as a speaker you're taking sides you're not neutral okay so bias means uh, lack of neutrality if you like okay and then five five is gown okay no problem so the the word gown means dress you know dress dress and dress and dress okay when I say not gown right when I say bridal gown bridal gown is the gown or the dress that the bride uh, the white dress that the bride wears on her wedding day any other uh, words okay good let's move on to in the first part of this uh, of this page 151 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 lengthy lengthy means what lengthy from long okay so long and lengthy have the same meaning okay but perhaps lengthy is more exaggerated but that's why it would show and reveal the bias of the writer You don't know what lively is when something is lively full of life <clears throat> okay so uh, let's go all the way to D uh, on uh, at the top of the it's okay no problem so this is the top of the page and we're do, uh, we're, what is it that we're doing? Remember when you spoke about relationships that you should detect or establish depending on your role. If you're a writer, uh, you establish logical relationships between the sentences. And if you're a reader, you detect those logical relationships between and among the sentences and paragraphs. Right? And we said that um, what uh, we spoke about the different relationships that we may have in a paragraph or between sentences we said that there are there is a relationship of cause and effect a relationship of condition a relationship of contradiction a relationship of addition and exemplification when you give examples when you uh, you can have a relationship of explanation right let's let's take them one at a time when i say that 
um, what uh, I I passed the exam because I worked very hard. So I passed the exam. This is sentence one. I worked very hard. And this is sentence two. So what's the relationship between the two sentences here? It's a relationship of what? Uh, let me give you the menu of relationships and you choose from them. Uh, relationship of cause and effect, relationship of condition, relationship of addition, relationship of contradiction. What do you think? Uh, number one, relationship of cause and effect. Okay, so the cause would be, or the reason would be, uh, you studied very well, and the result or the effect would be that you would uh, yeah, succeed, right, or pass the exam. Okay. Um, when I say you study, you study, you study very well, and you will pass the exam. You study very well, and you will pass the exam. What's the relationship here? Is it cause and effect? Yeah, it can be. What else can it be? Can it be a condition? Con I mean, uh, a relationship of condition? Yeah, that's that's correct, right? So the condition would be that you study very well, uh, okay? And if you study very well, you will uh, pass. You will definitely pass the exam. Yes. Uh, this is uh, one of the relationships the logical relationships that we have between sentences and this is actually what we're doing today we are focusing on the relationship of condition okay where uh, for something to happen for an action to materialize uh, um, a condition has to be met there is a requirement of a sort right um, do you think that you can, I'm asking you, do you think that you can pass the, the course without doing a final exam? I'm, I'm talking in general terms. You have to go through the final exam, right? But there is a condition, right? But the relationship here between passing the exam and, uh, you know, doing a, a final exam uh, is a relationship of condition. So uh, how can we make it? Okay, we say if you have a relationship of condition you use words like if and unless. Okay, so you're going to say if you do the final exam uh, or I mean, if you, you have to go through the final exam, uh, forget about uh, working, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, we're not being philosophical about it. We're trying to say that there is a condition. One of the conditions would be that you don't miss the final exam. Okay? So, if this is what we're saying, right? If you do the final exam, uh, you pass the course, for example as one of the requirements, okay? Um, again, this is a relationship of condition that we're talking about today. Um, so how can you spot, if you're a reader, if you're a reader and you're reading a passage or an article and you spot F, you know that there is a relationship of condition. You know that one sentence is a condition or a requirement and the other is uh, dependent on this requirement. Okay, so F is a conjunction. Remember when we said that F is a conjunction? You know what conjunctions are? Conjunctions are words that link sentences together, right? Remember when we spoke about simple sentences, compound sentences, and complex sentences? So remember that? Okay. So F is a conjunction that belongs to what kind of sentence? Does it belong to simple sentences? 
Do I need conjunctions in simple sentences? I'm asking you. Of course, no, because it's only one sentence. Right? So you need two sentences for a conjunction to work or operate, right? So simple sentences are only one sentence, or one sentence, I'm sorry. Okay. So do we use F with compound sentences? No. Why not? Because we have only like six or five conjunction, compound sentence conjunctions. Words like yet and but, uh, or, nor, right? And, but, so, fan, fan boys, if you still remember. Um, so F is um, one of the conjunctions of complex sentences. With the complex sentences, you have a sentence that is dependent and the other is independent. Okay, one independent sentence and the other is dependent. And the sentence that is dependent starts with F. When I say if he comes early, we will meet him. So, if he comes early, is um, is it a sentence? Can I call it a sentence? Because obviously a sentence means that it has to be meaningful in its own right, which is not happening here. When I say if, he comes early. Right? So, this is called a fragment, if you still remember. We, we call it a fragment. We say that it's part of the condition, yes Allah. Okay, and we because it's, it doesn't make full sense, we call it a fragment, a sentence fragment, right? Okay. So, let's talk about conditions for a while. So, conditions or for a bit. Conditions are of different natures or types or kinds okay so whenever you have a conditional sentence a sentence where there is a requirement or a condition I would like you to always check it okay and it's going to be one of three possibilities you only have three possibilities when it comes to conditions Sometimes you talk about what we call a hypothetical condition. A hypothetical or unlikely condition. Okay, we're talking about... Um, it's like when you say... Uh, sometimes you posit... Uh, when you're talking to people, you say for the sake of argument. Okay. For the sake of argument, it means that you know what you're saying is untrue, for example, or fantastical, or hypothetical. Okay, it's like saying suppose or supposing. So suppose or supposing means that you're talking about unreal uh, um, scenarios. You're talking about hypothetical scenarios. Okay. So this is one of the conditions. When you talk about hypothetical, hypothetical means you're putting forward a hypothesis. Hypothesis is your own theory of something, something that is not likely to happen. Okay, do you think, I'm asking you, do you think I have a million dollars? <laughs> No, right? Oh, okay, good. Okay, so you ask me a, a hypothetical question. So, Dr. Samah, what would you do if you had a million dollars? Do I have a million dollars? Well, it's only hypothetical. You ask me a hypothetical question. What would you do if you had a million dollars? Are you getting the idea? Do I have wings? Do you think that Dr. Sam has
his wings and he can fly no right if you ask a hypothetical question a fantastic uh, um, question by saying what would you dr. Samah what would you do if you had wings um, and I'll be answering saying I would fly the world it's, um, in the manner of traveling the world right when they ask people if you if you had money what would you do, do they would, he or she would say I would travel the world so if I had wings I would fly the world are you getting the idea so did you notice did you notice when we're talking about something that is not likely to happen okay if you talk about hypothetical scenarios if you talk about th things that are not likely to happen that are not uh, possible at least uh, as we speak you use the past so if I, I didn't say if I have, I said if I had, which is the past of have, which is an indication that what, what I'm talking about is physically impossible, perhaps. Yes, try. Are you getting the idea? <clears throat> um, I'm hopeful that we're not losing the momentum because you, you, you're you taking too long, yeah, Abdel Latif. So let me finish with my examples and you can um, yani come forward with yours. Okay? Let's assume, and it's assuming. Assuming is like supposing. Yeah. So what are you going to do if you have a superpower? Okay. So Abdel Latif is assuming that I don't have a superpower, which is correct. Okay. But he's, he's talking hypothetically if I had one. Okay. But is he is he expressing it the right way? No. Why? I don't have superpower. This is hypothetical, but that's why it, uh, it should be passed. So he he should have said, "What would you do? What would you do? Or what were you going to do if you had a superpower?" I mean, countries are described as superpowers, not individuals. You have the Latif anyway. Okay. Perhaps you mean uh, magic or magical power. Okay, let's let's give uh, perhaps more realistic examples. Um, let's assume that you're uh, asking for extra time, but I don't have this time. You're, uh, you, uh, you you simply say, Doctor Sam, can't you stay beyond? two hours because we need to do this and that we need you to uh, kind of help us with this or that okay and I don't have the time but um, um, I'm thinking of what happens if 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 I have the time but this is all hypothetical in this case I'm going to say uh, if I had the time which I don't have that's why it's hypothetical if I had the time I would stay one more hour. If I had the time, I would stay um, one more hour. Okay, let me give you another example. Okay, do you speak Russian? Do we have people speaking Russian in class? No. Let's assume that you speak Russian. So let's make a sentence where you use F, the hypothetical F, assuming and supposing that you speak Russian. So what are you going to say? 
Uh, are you going to say if I speak Russian or if, if I spoke Russian? Ah, very good. Yeah, let's do it. If I spoke Russian, let's go to the, the other part. What would you do? So if, no, no, we don't say if I would, no, this is not correct. Yeah, Fathi. Never, l l l this is interesting, Fathi. Just give me a second, please. Never use a modal verb after if. Keep it to the other sentence. Okay, ne modal verbs are words like would, could, may, might, should. You never use them immediately after if. You use it with the other sentence. Is that clear? So if I spoke Russian, what would... Yeah, let, let's talk about you. I would understand uh, Putin. Okay. If yeah, give me give me different uh, possibilities. So if I spoke Russian, comma, yeah, go ahead. If I spoke Russian, uh, okay. So well is not correct because uh, all of uh, yeah, in the, this part also has to be passed. You bet. You're going to say would. I would fly to Russia. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Are you are you in France now? Are, are you in France now? Okay. So what if? Go ahead. What are you going to say? What if? So if. Okay. Say. I mean, I would like you to say the two sentences. If. So you're going to say, if I were in France now, I would spend the rest of my... Uh, okay, this is a different thing. Okay. So, if I were in France now, I would... I would visit... The, what, what are some of the landmarks, tourist landmarks and tourist destinations? I would visit the Eiffel Tower, perhaps. I would eat in some of their very expensive uh, restaurants. Okay, good. Bye. Okay, type. Uh, are you a teacher? Are you a teacher? Are you a teacher? Okay, so give me a sentence where you have F and the sentence that comes after and then the other sentence. <clears throat> hmm. Ah yes, if oh, okay, if I was a teacher, I would give my students full marks. But normally, because you're not a teacher, because this is uh, at least now is hypothetical and uh, impossible, you you change was into where. So if you say you say like Ola is saying, if I were a teacher, I would cancel the quiz. Okay, um, Ahmed is saying, if I were a teacher, I would. Uh, teach well. Okay. Yes. Okay. Bye. Are you getting the idea? Are you getting a good handle on uh, on this hypothetical F? Hypothetical is about past. Okay. Let's talk about another scenario. Um. Let's talk about lost opportunities. 
let's talk about missing something let me ask you are you familiar um, if you if you're uh, in front of the um, your laptop or desktop there is this uh, two combinations of uh, keys you have control uh, control Z are you familiar with control Z when you when you press control and Z at the same time what happens control Z everyone no it's not back what happens yeah it's not, it's not that you you return sometimes you do something by mistake perhaps and if you uh, press control Z um, I mean you can always there is uh, with control Z there is always uh, this chance to correct stuff right uh, undo something yes excellent it's about undoing stuff yes back to last condition it's about the idea that you have another chance to do something right are you getting the idea so um, my question is do we have control Z in life can you redo what you did yesterday can you go back to yesterday and uh, and do what uh, what you know right so we don't have control Z in life right so once you do something it's over right okay so sometimes um, uh, let's talk about choices for example you have people coming from different universities right they do uh, a year or two perhaps in a university and then they come uh, to the Arab Open University or uh, and uh, so, sometimes people don't study properly and then they they, they fail right can can they uh, can 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 they use control Z so that they they would have avoided what they did alas it's over right okay so this is a situation where you uh, people are normally regretful over something okay where uh, there is no control Z so that you can redo or you can undo what you did right we have a condition uh, um, where we use F to talk about just that let's talk about last let, let's assume that uh, last semester me not you let's assume that I am um, an AOU student and last semester I didn't do well I didn't st study and the um, and because I didn't study I didn't pass the exam right do I, do we have control Z is there anything I can do about it no obviously no okay but how can I express that this is a missed opportunity I missed the opportunity to pass and I feel regretful over that how can I express that yeah, but here we're talking about past and you cannot retrieve the past alas once alas it's over so in this case you're going to say you're going to say if I had studied well last semester obviously if I had studied well I would have passed the exam but I didn't that's why I failed okay so this is called um, conditional three and conditional three is about impossibilities impossibilities simply because we're talking about the past and there is no way we can retrieve the past there is no control Z in life okay 
Um, let's talk about missed opportunities. You give me some. Uh, somebody may, may come and say, listen, I only knew about the Arab Open University last year. And I have been looking for a university for the past three years. So what would he what would he say? He would say if I had known about the Arab Open University three or four years ago, I would have joined it. I would have joined it. Does it make sense? Let's talk about a TMA that has a deadline and you didn't meet the deadline, the cutoff date. How would you express? Now, of course, you're regretful and sad and everything. No, we don't say that. I said never use a modal verb with F. Would is a modal verb, yeah, Salah. Okay, remember, it's going, it's not going to be only past, because past is for hypothetical F. You're going to use what we call past perfect. If I had had Okay, if I had had more time, I would have finished it. Okay. So what happens if you have a flight at 7, at 7 a.m. and you woke up at 8 a.m.? You have a flight at 7 a.m. Did you miss the flight? Did you miss it this way? Did you miss it? If it was at 7 and you woke up at 8. Okay, you missed it, right? How can you express that? So if if I had yeah, if I had slept er, early yeah, that's correct, Salah. If I had slept early, I wouldn't have missed the flight. I wouldn't have missed the plane. Does it make sense? Ah, yes. If I had gotten up early, I wouldn't have missed the plane. Absolutely. Yes. That's correct. Let's assume that a friend of ours had an accident because perhaps he was uh, exceeding the um, speed limit. So how can we express that? He had an accident, he had exceeded the speed limit. We don't have control Z, obviously. We cannot advise him in the past, right? We can, we could, we can only wish that uh, it hadn't happened, but it did. How can we express that? <laughs> A try, give it your best shot. Okay. If he had over, no, 
No. Yeah, obviously you're not getting the idea. Yeah, like Ahmad is saying, if he hadn't driven fast, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have had an accident. He wouldn't have had an accident. So if he hadn't exceeded the speed limit, he wouldn't have had an accident. Yes. Does it make sense? Okay, right. let's move to... So we spoke about hypothetical scenarios, hypothetical uh, situations where something is not likely to happen because of how physically impossible it is, like me having wings uh, 15 minutes ago, right? And we also talk about impossibilities in the past, right? Let's now move to things that are likely to happen things that are likely to happen okay so what happens if you study well what happens if you study well Okay, very good. I passed the quiz. Yeah, absolutely. No problem, Ali. Thank you so much for your time. Yes. Um, yeah, Sarah Darwish. If, no, uh, remember it's passed, right? So you're going to say, if I had known, if I had known that airports uh, would close, I would have made my reservation earlier. I would have made my reservation earlier. Okay. Let's just focus on possible scenarios. Now we're moving to possible scenarios. Things that are likely to happen, things that can happen. Okay, things that has or that have the potential of happening because they are within our power. Okay, remember the example? The example is about studying well. If you study well, you pass, right? Can, can I still study well? Is it within, I'm asking you by the way, is it within my power to study well? Do I still have time to study well? Yes. So it's something within my power. It's, it, it is something that I still have time for. So it's possible. It's likely. So Okay, so if you talk about possible stuff, things that you or anybody else for that matter can do, can still do, in this case, the first part is going to be present symbol, and the second part will be a uh, model in uh, in the present. Okay. So how can I express that? I'm going to say if I study well, which I can. If I study well, I will pass the exam. Right. This is called. This is not hypothetical. This is not in the past. Right? This is about the present and the future. It's something that you can do. Right? Okay. So, come tomorrow, this is a sentence, and see him. Is it possible? Can, can I come? Can I come tomorrow? Is it, is, is it within my power? Yeah. Do I have time for it? Yes. So how can you express it? You're going to say, if you come tomorrow, which you can, 
okay so if you come tomorrow you will meet him or you can meet him if if I come tomorrow I will see him excellent if I come tomorrow I may see him if I come tomorrow I can see him all the possibilities are about the present and the future does it make sense okay okay Sorry. let me give you another example um, uh, is it possible that coronavirus comes to an end within the the upcoming two weeks isn't that a possibility it's possible right so what will happen if it comes to an end within the coming two weeks No, I'm not. I'm like, listen, you know, I'm focusing on something and I have a certain line of thought that I'm following. Yes, Allah. If you would like to present exam, to give examples that we're giving, if you want to play along, play along. Okay. So if this happens, uh, uh, like Ahmad is saying, if this happens, uh, I will go to Mecca. Yes. Yeah, that's interesting. That's, that's a uh, possibility. So, if coronavirus comes to an end within the coming weeks, we will go back to school. For example, we will go back to university or we're going, we will go back to school. We may. You can use well, you can use can, you can use may. All of them, as you can see, are in the present and they talk about the future. So, this is called what? This is called possible scenarios things that are likely to happen things that can happen things that have the potential to happen whether on the individual level you having the power to do something and you have the time for it or we're talking on uh, the level of events for example an event uh, can uh, happen or can okay Sorry. This is, this is what we call first conditional. First conditional is about stuff that uh, uh, may happen, that, ha that have the potential or has the potential to happen. Things that can happen. Okay. Um, and we have examples. We have zero condition. okay so zero condition is when we talk about facts with facts after F you use present symbol and the other part is present symbol too. when we talk about natural phenomena okay when we talk about um, when you heat water to 100 degree what happens to water for example this is this is science this is something that you cannot yes absolutely that you cannot challenge if you talk about facts that cannot be challenged in this case you're going to use present symbol and present symbol so if you heat water to 100 degree it boils 
you don't say it will boil no you don't say if you will heat you say heat and boil can you think of other natural phenomena that can be expressed using F this is called zero F so it's about natural stuff things that are scientifically proven if you like when you also talk about common sense okay when you talk about common sense it's present symbol and present symbol okay uh, like Ahmad Samah says, if you heat metal, it expands. Ah. Present, present. Okay? This is called zero condition. Okay? Uh, and we have an example here. We're like, if governments ignore problems, if governments ignore problems, can can they ignore problems this they can right it's it's common sense that some governments may, may ignore problems what will happen those problems what what happens with them they become worse they become bigger is it isn't that common sense What should you do with your son? You raise him in a proper way. Or else, you raise him in a... Common sense says, if you raise your, your son or daughter in a proper way, they behave. Right? Can we put it in a sentence? So if you raise your son in a proper way, he behaves, right? Common sense. So zero conditional is about facts and is uh, uh, or are also about common sense. If you raise your kids well, they behave well, absolutely. Yes. This is called zero condition. And then the first condition is the one about possibility, things that you can do. If I study well, I will pass this year. Right? If I take care, I will not fall. Okay. If I behave well, people will like me. Remember, sometimes you have this very slight difference between zero and first, right? Zero condition and first condition. But of course, there is a big difference between zero and first condition on the one hand and the second condition because the second condition is about hypothetical scenarios things that are not likely to happen like winning a million dollars for example okay so if if i won a million dollars i would buy a house and a villa and i don't know what else right and then we spoke about the third conditional, which is about control Z, the fact that we don't have control Z in life. We talk about the past. Okay? Do I make sense? What time is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, 
So let's move to um, this is 151 understanding conditionals. There are several patterns with F, including zero, first, uh, and second, and even third. All the patterns describe actions and results. So if government, zero for example, if governments ignore problems, they become worse. But this is zero condition because this is common sense, okay? right? And then the first condition would be about, okay, the potential, I mean, the fact that something has potential in uh, itself or you have the ability and the time to do something. If the government does nothing, this problem will become worse. Again, if I study well, I will pass. And then you have the second uh, um, condition. And second condition is about, uh, about hypothetical scenario, things that are not likely to happen. Okay? We're supposing that they happen. In this case, you uh, would use past symbol, and the other part would be would plus uh, the, the verb in the base. So if the government changed the law, well, obviously the, the government did, didn't change the law. So the govern, if the government changed the law, it would solve the problem. Okay? Are you getting the idea? Okay, time. Okay, so again, 151 uh, D, really read skill check two, which we did. What are the verb forms in each of the three patterns? The zero pattern, what is the verb form? And uh, let me give you a menu of choices. With, with zero, zero pattern, you have uh, present. Yani, I mean base form or past or past perfect. Present, past, past perfect with zero. Present, absolutely. The verb in the base form. Right, very good. With first, first is what? Common sense, right? And also common sense and also about things that may happen because they are within our power and we have the time for them. Yeah, excellent. Present and the other part is future, yes. Hello, which means will or can or may. Okay, the second. Remember the second? Second conditional is about hypothetical scenarios. Hypothetical means that they uh, uh, never happens. Uh, they are not uh, likely to happen. In this case, you're going to use past and the other part would be would or could. Very good, yeah, Fatih. We don't have the third one. I added the third one. Uh, perhaps this, is, this would be the subject of another day. Yes. Okay. Um, so which type of conditional describes a hypothetical or unlikely action. Which of the three, zero, first, or second, which of them describes a hypothetical or unlikely action? Yeah, two, abs absolutely, number two, right. A likely action, likely means that it is possible, it is probable, it may happen, likely. So likely action, one, absolutely, very good. Something which is always true. Something which is always true. Something which is always true. Yeah, A, absolutely, Aula. Thank you so much, Aula. Zero, yes. Aula, yes. Okay. So let's move all the way to F. Recognizing the form of conditional sentences. Okay. 
so what we have here this is an exercise in editing and proofreading where you have errors and you're trying to first of all detect them and after you detect them you correct them you have how many you have 10 sentences so find and correct the grammar mistake in each sentence so there is a grammar mistake in every and each sentence I promise you so what is it that you're going to do you're going to detect the mistake and then after that you're going to correct it can we do that yeah of course we can so again this is exercise F it's okay Abdul Latif no problem so we're doing F we're detecting the errors in F and then we uh, correct them I'll give you uh, perhaps three or four minutes for that because it's um, interesting and I would like you to get inspired by, by our uh, discussions of the conditionals okay no problem Abdul Latif no problem okay can we do that let me know when you have finished okay you guys have four minutes Yes, yes, yeah, I'm the lot here. No problem. You're most welcome. Inshallah at 2 p.m. Inshallah. We have a class tomorrow at 2 p.m. You're welcome. Hello. Almost done. Halfway through. Finished. What's happening with you? Uh, 
Okay, can we take them one at a time? Okay, first of all, I would like you to tell me uh, um, what kind of condition is it? Is it zero condition? So this is how you're going to start. You're going to start, wait, wait, wait a moment. Wait, let me explain it first and then we proceed. So you need to tell me what condition, because obviously the kind of condition would determine the, the kind of action that you're taking, right? Okay. Um, so you tell me what condition you're talking about and then you uh, kind of correct the sentence accordingly, right? Yeah, okay. So number one, if you, uh, if you cool metal, it contracted. Obviously, we have errors, right? But this is a zero, uh, a zero condition like Fathi is saying, okay? Because it's a fact, right? We're talking about facts. Okay. So can we... So w what is the problem? If you cool metal, this is obviously correct. Comma, it contracts. Excellent, Ya Ahmed. It contracts, absolutely. Okay, let's move to the second one. Uh, and the sentence of uh, obviously is not correct. If you will heat water to 100 it, and then it boils. This is what? This is zero condition. Yeah, okay. This is also a fact. So what is it that you're going to do? Like I said, you never use well or you never use a modal verb after F. So you're going to say if you heat water to 100 degree, it boils. Okay. You, uh, okay, if you... No, no, you don't use well. Yeah, it's a zero condition. You, you're, contradic you're contradicting yourself, yeah, Fathi. Remember, in the first one you said zero, and you never used right. Are you getting the idea? It boils. Yeah, very good. Okay, number three. If an animal eats plants and other animals, it's called an omnivore. If an animal eats plants and other animals, it's called an omnivore. What do you think of this? Yeah, it's, this is also, this is zero. Yeah, like Fathi is saying. Uh, and you have a, a slight or a small grammatical error where you need is. So if an animal eats plants and other animals, it is, it is called an omnivore. Okay. It is called, yeah, it is called, yeah, yes, and that's correct. If the climate changes too quickly in an area, some of the plants and animals may to die. This is what? This is also zero, yes. If the climate changes too quickly in an area, some of the plants animals and animals may die. Or die. Yeah. This is where you can use both, by the way, Ahmed. You can use zero. Okay. You can use zero as a fact and common sense. And you can also use a first condition. Okay, it can be both, by the way. Isn't that a fact? Yeah, Ahmed, I'm asking you. Isn't it a fact that uh, if the climate changes too quickly in an area, some of the plants and animals, uh, um, you know, die? This is, this is a fact which makes it zero. Okay. And this is common sense. If, if it's not a fact, yeah, Ahmed, it can be a, com a common sense, right? And common sense is also zero, right? Are you getting the idea? And it can also be the first. Yeah, we're talking about the potential of climate change. Okay? In this case, it can be first. So it can be both. Uh, okay. So if students get more than 70% on average in all the assignments, they would get the top grade. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is hypothetical. Uh, Fathi is saying that this is hypothetical. This is second. So that's why. Wh what are we going to say? No, this is hypothetical. Yeah, Ahmed. Hypothetical means that this is an imaginary scenario. Okay. Because they they can score score way less than that. So F student got more than seventy percent on average on all the assignments, they would get the top grade. Again, this is hypothetical. This is not true. Okay? It's only a hypothesis. If it happens, it happens. Okay? Okay, people react badly if managers will treat them like children. People react badly if managers will treat them like children. Okay. Oh, that there is okay I need somebody to say regardless of what degree it is I needed somebody to come and say listen there is well after F we need to demolish it to we, we need to uh, kind of drop it first of all and then we talk isn't that true like I said whenever you have F you never use a modal verb with it you keep the model to the second sentence. And then let's 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 talk about the sentence. So people react badly if managers uh, treat them like children. Isn't that common sense? Isn't that a fact? common sense common sense if you treat me badly what do you expect me to uh, if you treat me like children like a child what I'm trying to say is that it can be zero common sense it can be zero in this case it's common sense and it can also be one possibility that they react the way they would. Okay, so what are you? Are, what are we going to say? So people react badly if managers treat them like children. This is zero. Or people will react badly if managers treat them like children. So it can be zero and one. Zero. If you're going to, if it's zero, it's going to be co the common sen sense part of something. It's only natural that if you treat me like a child, I will react badly, or I react badly. Well, eh? keep. I, I'm, I'm trying. What I'm trying to say. Uh, please keep an open mind. Okay. This is language. Okay. There is no absolute right or absolute wrong when it comes to conditionals, especially. No. Okay, react the way you want. <laughs> but it's common sense. If people treat you a fathi and you are uh, 20 something or 30 something, if people treat you like a child, isn't it natural? Isn't that common sense? Isn't that a fact that you're going to react badly? I'm not saying that one is not correct. I'm saying that the two scenarios are possible. Whether you're dealing with, with it as common sense or as uh, some, uh, the, yeah, I mean, something that has uh, a potential. Yeah. This is another issue, yeah, Abdi Kareem. Why? Why didn't you do the course? And this is this is actually. What time is it? <clears throat> do you know who your teacher is?
OK. OK, send me an email. Send, man, send me an email with the, uh, with the quiz inside. Okay. If you don't send it today, you lose your uh, the ten marks of the second quiz because you're um, already overdue. You should have like submitted it on the LMS long time ago. Uh, okay, five. If students get more than seventy percent on average in all the assignments, they would get the top great okay we're we're saying we don't know yet right we don't know yet whether they are going to uh, score 70 percent this is only we call it speculation okay speculation means uh, uh, speculation has an element of uh, uh, it's hypothetical in nature we're not talking about hard and dry facts yet okay so that's why we're saying this is hypothetical and if this is hypothetical it's going to be passed okay so if student got but they didn't get yet right they didn't get yet okay they would if this happens they would do this and that especially especially look at the second part you normally Uh, you normally uh, don't have uh, the two parts incorrect. So pa part of the two uh, sentences is correct, and you correct the other part. Uh, okay, and uh, let me just uh, check what time. Uh, we still have like, uh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> so we can talk more about them. Uh, this Sometimes they are, uh, this is typical of language. It can be very debatable. The people... Uh, uh, can have different perspectives. It doesn't mean that you you are correct and I am wrong, or you are wrong and I'm correct. But keep an open mind, especially when we talk about uh, zero and first, and even the second, as you can see in this example uh, that we're talking about. Uh, I mean, Ahmed and I. Okay. Where where did we stop? Yeah, let's let's finish with this. So you may remember more if you highlight keywords in your notes. Okay. Is it is it possible that you highlight keywords in your notes? Do you have the time and the power and the energy to do that? Okay. So what are you going to say? Yes, go ahead. So you may. So what happens after may? The verb has to be in the base form. So if you may, uh, I'm sorry, you may remember more if you highlight keywords in your notes. Right? Okay. I will move to a better flat if I had more money. What did you understand from that? By the way, may and might have the same meaning, Yalina. Okay? And we're talking about the present, but that's why you shouldn't uh, change may. It should remain as such. Again, I will move to a better flat if I had more money. What, what do you understand? Uh, do you understand that he, ha that he have more money? No, but this is hypothetical. Uh, he's giving a hypothetical scenario. Something that is not likely to happen, at least now. So, in order to express it, he should have said, I would, right? He should have said, I would move to a better flat if I had more money. This is assuming that he talks about now. Okay. 
okay now he doesn't have the money that's why he wouldn't move to a better flat had had ya lina had because this is hypothetical then if we don't have if ya yeah, lina where is if i don't see any f's It's numbers, not letters, that we have here, Lina. Okay, time. Nine, let's move to nine. Weddings, we weddings would be a, a lot cheaper if people would not invite so many guests to the reception. We have a problem after F. Let's start with the problem that we have after F. What's the problem after F here in nine? Yeah, excellent. Ahmed Samah is saying we we shouldn't have any modal verb, and the word would is a modal verb, right? Okay, let's move to the degree. Is it zero, one, or two? Two, right? Okay. So uh, how are you going to say it? Let's say it. So with weddings would be a lot cheaper if uh, people say it. Past symbol. A uh, people didn't excellent. A uh, people didn't invite so many guests to, to the reception. Right? This is hypothetical because they invite so many people and this is something that he is not so happy about if you go back to the article, right? So the problem gets worse if the government will not take action. True. Yeah, that's true. But, but we have a problem in the second sentence. What's the problem in the second sentence before we talk? Yeah, like Ola is saying, we have well, which is a model, and we shouldn't have a model in the second sentence. The model here is well. So, remove the model and then check. What do you think? This is 0 or 1? Okay. Can we say that it can be both? If the government does not take action, the problem gets worse. Or, if the government uh, does not take action, the problem will get worse. The two of them are correct, by the way. Right? Okay. Type. Uh, we're going to stop on, on this note and with this item. Before I go, I would like to take attendance. Uh, let me take attendance. How many people uh, do we have? We have 16. We have Fathi Abdel Malik, Salah Makkawi, Naif El Malki, Abdel Kareem, I don't know Abd Kareem whom. Ahmed Samah, Ali Samir, Amani, Amani what? Amna Omar, Lina, Lina Faisal, Muhammad Al Omari, Ola, Omar, Reem, Salah, Sara Darwish, I'm sorry, Sumaya, and that would be it. No, I don't remember. You have to send me another email and saying that I am your teacher. If you don't send the quiz today, you lose 10 marks at the cream. Okay, let's go back. Okay, is that clear? Do you, do you guys need any help with any of the things that we set together? Yeah, okay, I'm any Omar, no problem. Ah, uh, uh, yes, this is the one, yes. Uh, like, uh, yes, it is. Uh, I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow at two o'clock, inshallah. Yalla, assalamu alaikum. Uh, soon, inshallah. Uh, perhaps in a week or so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Send. Yeah, resend it. Send it again.
يلا السلام عليكم ايفرون